Just tell me when. You're all good. Cool. Hello. Okay, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, nice. Okay. I am going to pull up slides so I can actually give you some visuals. Um hold up on these <laughs> slides, please. Like one more minute. I'm sorry. It's fine. Can you see them now? Can you see the slides? Uh, the laptop, yeah. Cool. All right. We'll get the slides up on them. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm just gonna screen share these slides and get to it. So uh, hello, I'm Cassidy Williams, and I'm here to talk to you about Intro to Machine Learning. Um, I'm a software engineer and developer evangelist at Clarify. We're an artificial intelligence startup in New York City. Um, and so if you've played with our API, cool. If you haven't, I highly recommend it, and you can check it out at developer.clarify.com. That ends my spiel, kind of. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about an intro to machine learning. And uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, machine learning is artificial intelligence. It was once considered kind of a subset of artificial intelligence, but that line has kind of become increasingly blurred um, as machine learning gets bigger and bigger um, and just kind of encompasses a lot of what artificial intelligence is. And so I'm going to kind of use the terms interchangeably. Um, so I don't know how many of you have ever heard of Tom Mitchell, but he's kind of the professor who created the fundamentals of machine learning. Um, and the definition of it is here. A computer program is said to learn from experience E with respect to some task T and some performance measure P if its performance on T as measured by P improves with experience E. Woohoo! Uh, and so I know a lot of you are probably like, what? Um, but I will get into that with an example. So let's just say you have a machine that is a computer. Um, and you want your computer to learn how to tell where a banana is in a bowl of fruit. So in this case, our experience is this bowl of fruit, so our experience E, and our task T is to find the banana. And so our performance measure P could be anything, um, so we'll just say color. So our performance measure P is color. Um, so the computer is going to start searching through the bowl. Um, and so it looks at this one, it looks at this one, it looks at this one, and as it um, goes through the bowl and it finds fruits that are not yellow, uh, our performance measure color, um, it begins to learn what is not a banana until it finds the yellow fruit. And so it finds this one and then um, it's just like, oh, this is yellow, this is a banana. And that represents machine learning. Um, so it's learning by the negatives what a banana is. If there was a yellow apple there, um, it might learn that a banana is not only yellow, but it's also not round. And so the important thing here is that it learns not only from the positives, but also the negatives, what a banana is and what a banana isn't. So how does Clarify do it? Um, we use neural networks. Um, neural networks are a computer algorithm uh, designed to simulate how the brain works. Um, and nobody really understands how the brain works, but um, there's algorithms in neural networks that exhibit some of the properties that the brain has been shown to exhibit. And um, so it's just this, it's a, it's a glorified algorithm. Um, so in every neural network, there's um, some kind of training phase that can follow any parameter um, to follow. And so there's um, pairs of input data and desired output that's been collected beforehand. And so for example, with Clarify, our input data is images, and our categories of concepts are the output. And so um, if I have a picture of a dog, it might say, dog, cute, furry, something like that, um, small. Um, and so uh, there's all kinds of different outputs that I could have. So Clarify uh, started with 10,000 categories, and now we're at almost 11,000, around 11,000, that uh, the parameters fit into uh, these categories. So um, first of all, there's an easy to understand way of doing this. There's, there's a few different algorithms, um, and this is probably the easiest one to understand. And uh, Clarify does not do this, but it'll get you started. Um, and that's adjacent neural networks. And so um, this might look familiar to a lot of you because it looks like one large map. It takes in positives and negatives on the input layer um, and creates nodes that match up with those positives and negatives. So you can have um, many, many Layer. The layer on the left, the output layer on the right, and then this uh, middle layer is hidden layers. Um, and there can be many and many, many of those. 
Um, so it takes in all kinds of positives and negatives, create nodes that match up with those positives and negatives. Um, and as you train concepts and create parameters, it starts to create a network. And um, each of the nodes in that hidden layer in the middle um, has a confidence, and the highest uh, confidence ones is followed and then calculated at the end. Um, and so again, for images, the input would be images. And then the hidden layer are all the different characteristics of that image. And then the output would be tags for that image. Um, and so I'll give you another example with a banana. Um, so at the start of the training phase, um, all the parameters in that hidden layer are start off at random. Um, and so it can learn in any order. It doesn't have to follow anything in particular. Um, and so the input layer is this photo of the banana. And anything past the input is um, a hidden layer, which, again, are those characteristics of the banana. Um, and so it starts to iterate through. And first it looks at blue. And because the banana is not blue, it'll look at red. Uh, the banana is not red. And so it looks at yellow. And that's correct. Um, and so now that it has determined that it's yellow, it's going to go th to the next hidden layer of characteristics that would follow a yellow thing. Um, and so there might be uh, textures next. And so one of the textures that would follow is smooth, for example. And then the next one after yellow and smooth might be curved. Um, and it gets the confidence level for all of these different um, features and then it averages them out and then determines that there's a 97% chance that this image is a banana. Um, and so it's looking at the picture as a whole and the characteristics of the major aspect of the image. That's what adjacency does. Um, and so it kind of just follows this path of characteristics until it gets that. Um, so that's adjacency. Um, so then there's this awesome way that uh, Clarify does, and uh, it's convolution neural networks. Um, convolution neural networks is actually a concept that our founder created, which is why we talk about it a lot. Um, and it's very similar to adjacency. There's a lot of keywords that are similar, but it is different. And um, so this is kind of the map that you follow here. And um, it's a little confusing at first, and so I'll talk about it. But it basically, it starts with an image um, and then kind of takes various aspects of the image until you get tags at the end. Um, and so there are four definitions that you should probably know if you're going to start learning about convolutional neural networks. You don't have to memorize these, and I'll get into more of them in detail. But initially, um, there's local receptive fields, which is a window on the input of pixels. And so it's just looking at a specific set of pixels. Um, next, there's a feature map, which is just mapping from uh, an input layer, so like the image, to the hidden layer. Um, and so there's a hidden layer just like in adjacent networks. Um, shared weights which is positives or negatives on a feature map um, that we talked about before. And then pooling, which is uh, simplifying the information from the feature maps um, and kind of compressing all of them together. And, um, so now that you have these definitions, I'll actually explain what's actually happening. So let's just say we have the banana again. Um, over the banana, we have um, this overlay of input neurons. And um, neurons are groupings of n by n pixels. You could have it as 5 by 5 pixels. You could have it as 1 by 1 pixels. That's what we use. Um, you could have any set of neurons, but let's just say n by n. Um, then we have a local receptive field, which is a window on this grouping of pixels. Slash um, and local receptive fields are more like m by m, m as in Mary. So there, there's n by n neurons, and then uh, m by m uh, neurons for uh, the local receptive field. So um, then we actually have to start using these local receptive fields to create a feature map. So first, we'll start with the local receptive field in the top left corner. Uh, we're compressing um, it and mapping this local receptive field to our first feature map, which will create our first hidden layer. Um, a hidden layer can't exist without a feature map. And so you take this local receptive field of five by five neurons, again, it doesn't really matter, and then you compress it and then put it onto this first feature map. Um, then we slide the local receptive field over by, um, we just scooted it over by one neuron, but it could be any number of neurons less than or equal to M because you wanna make sure that you cover the entire image and not uh, skip any aspects of the image. Um, and then you, once you scooted it over one, that maps to the second um, neuron on the feature map. Um, and so a feature map is the definition of one characteristic of this picture. And so as it goes out throughout this entire picture with this local receptive field, it just maps all of these to this first um, 
characteristic um, on, on the feature map, which com, uh, composes of a hidden layer. So because each feature map um, is one characteristic, to do image recognition, we'll need more than one feature map. And so a complete hidden layer is a lot of these different uh, feature maps. So that's each of these white squares here. Um, and so the act of splitting the image into neurons, creating a local receptive field on those neurons, compressing that local receptive field into a neuron on the feature map, and then building a hidden layer out of these feature maps, um, which is a lot of steps, so that's called convolution. And so eventually at the end of convolution, you get a hidden layer of feature maps that come from these local receptive fields. <coughs> and um, this is actually what a hidden layer looks like in real life. Um, and so this entire image right here that you see is a hidden layer. And the smaller boxes, um, like the four by, five by four boxes right there, um, those are feature maps. Each of those are individual feature maps. And the little boxes in those feature maps um, are neurons from the local receptive fields. And um, this is where we talked about the shared weights definition earlier. These are what those shared weights are. And so the whiter blocks are more positive and the darker blocks are more negative. And so you have each of these feature maps that are specific characteristics and then different probabilities and aspects of the image that um, are more positive and negative. So you can determine what of that um, feature map uh, is that characteristic, what's the confidence level of that feature map. So once you get past convolution, there's pooling. And so pooling, what that does, it takes the feature map from convolution and makes a more condensed feature map based on it. And so it's very, very similar to convolution where it's kind of like a little window on neurons that's uh, pooled into something. Um, but this has just happened, it's very similar to convolution, but it only happens on the feature maps in the first hidden layer. Um, and so once you get all of those feature maps um, kind of pooled together, you have this um, new map here. Um, now this image is kind of hard to see, but uh, I will fix that up. But there's the big image on the left and that maps to um, these this first hidden layer and then that, that's mapped to another hidden layer and it kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller until at the very end, that's where you get tags. Um, you might be wondering, since we're actually going pixel by pixel on this image, we might be learning the location of characteristics of the image. Um, and that's actually not true. Um, what happens is you can either hold on, you have to hold on to very specific aspects in order for the convolution to work properly. So you can hold on to the location or hold on to the characteristics. This is how all neural networks are. So we hold on to the characteristic because it's our job to define what's in the image rather than uh, the location of things in the image. Because if let's just say you're looking at an image and you want locations, you would only get kind of objects in the image, but you don't know what they are. You would just have the, like the pixel dimensions of things in the image without having those things be defined. And so we kind of look into um, the actual things in the image. So again, the network begins with input neurons, which are used to encode uh, pixel intensities for the image. Um, and then the convolutional layer, using a local receptive field and multiple feature maps, um, you find the characteristics of the image. And so with this hidden layer, then you pool those all together, um, create the feature maps, then you get the hidden feature neurons, and then um, at the very end, you end up getting uh, all the tags, your output. Um, and so this graphic might make a lot more sense again now, but, uh, now that uh, you kind of understand what happens. And so convolution, you combine all the pixels, you pool them together, and then we actually do convolution twice. And so as you do that, um, it becomes uh, very, very specific on what you're actually finding. Um, and with each hidden layer, the definitions of all of these characteristics are very independent of one, one another, unlike adjacency. With adjacency, for example, with that banana, we looked at color, and then we looked at texture, and then we looked at shape. With convolution, they're completely um, independent, and so we can put each characteristic on its own thread. Um, and so the size of the operation gets smaller and smaller as you're doing this, um, and it's just multiple processes running um, individually with each feature map. So uh, the speed of this algorithm is just dependent on the size of the image, and so it's O of N, which is amazing. It runs really, really fast um, and because we do it this way. Um, and so kind of in summary there, uh, convolution is uh, fast to train. There's multiple items found um, when you actually 
train it because you're again uh, doing it with these individual characteristics. Um, with adjacency, there's no recognition of spatial structure. Like um, you don't necessarily find multiple things, but it's great for finding the major aspect of an image. Um, but both of them are a neural network. They're both neural network algorithms. And so um, they're both good if you want uh, multiple aspects of an image, like if it's a bunch of different animals or a bunch of different things, um, definitely use convolution. But if you just want to know what's in an image, this major aspect is adjacency. Um, did you get that? I hope so. If you don't, uh, again, I work for Clarify. Um, and so again, we have over 11,000 concepts trained. So if you just wanted to give us an image or just try it out, um, you can use our API and uh, just get your tags for an image. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, you get all the confidence levels for each of the tags um, for your image. And so it might be kind of fun for you to play with. And uh, that's the official end of my talk. But does anybody have any questions? There must be questions. Um, so that picture was determined to be um, that was like that was the output um, of the boat was that it might be a, a bird or a cat or something. Was that what it was? Oh, yeah, was, that, like, was, that was just example tags. Um, oh, that was real. Yeah, that wasn't real. That was just a diagram. Um, <laughs> but like, if if you were to do it on like an actual thing, if you were if you were to do it on an actual image, you could get a lot of different uh, things out of it. Um, for example, I'll screen share again and just show you a quick demo. Um, one second. So if I were to go to clarify.com, we have a demo. Then I'll pull up a trusty image of a cat. <laughs> Internet. Um, I like that cat. So I'll get this picture of a cat. And then I'll put it on the Clarify demo. One second. Uh, these are the tags that show up. So it says cute cat, animal, pet, portrait, mammal, eye, fur, kitten, young, little domestic hair, baby, and whisker. Um, and so they're all like very individual tags and like baby doesn't necessarily fit the rest of them, but that's because they were all individually defined. Um, and that's kind of how that works. Any other questions? I know I kind of just gave you a lot of information, but I'm here for you. When you mentioned the uh, convolution algorithm, is that related to like the convolution um, mathematical function used in a lot of signal processing? Um. Yes. In in a way, um, and that is actually more of a question for our research team that I should get answered. But yes, it's it's kind of related in a way. Um, convolution is like a newer concept that was invented literally in the past like four or five years. Um, and so it's not nearly as uh, well defined as convolution in like signal processing or anything. But um, I think mathematically they're related. What's cool with um, convolution is that uh, you can have like some kind of general model that will recognize anything. Um, again, we have like eleven thousand tags, but if you wanted specific tags, you can feed it a model, and then it'll only get tags related to that model. So, for example, we have um, a weddings model, and so all of the tags that you get from a photo, you can get it specifically related to weddings, and it's the same algorithm, and it's very fast to train. Um, it would just give you tags related to a specific model that you've given. We also have new ones like for food, for example, or uh, we also can determine if a photo is not safe for work or not um, with this kind of algorithm. Because again, it's, it's fast and uh, once a tag is uh, defined and trained, it can just add that to the network and uh, learn based on that. Very I have a question. So, um, what is the size of your entire database for your company? For the entire company? Very long. Um, because, again, each, each 
tag trained on our network has to be trained <coughs> individually. Um, our, our network of images that we have mm -hmm. trained on is probably, um, it's in the billions. It, there, there's a lot of images that we train. Um, and luckily, like, you don't have to have billions of images. If you want to train something, you can have something as little as 10 images, but it would be the kind of thing where it's not as specific as um, a network that does have that many images. Um, but a lot of uh, interesting algorithms that you might find on GitHub or something where they've done a neural network, they're trained with only like 100 or 200 images. And so um, it really depends on the project and on the company that we pull images from all over the internet and um, we have like a lot of partner companies that will give us their database of images with um, how they categorize them so we can train our network on it. So um, yes, basically billions of images, but you don't necessarily need that if you wanted to do the sun drum. Well, I guess, well, thank you again for talking. Does anyone else have any questions or anything at all? No, I think everyone enjoyed your talk. Thank you guys for coming. Well, thank you for talking to us. Thank you again for presenting. But, all right, well, thank you all for coming, and please feel free to have some cookies when you go out. Thank yeah, you. feel free to email me or tweet me or something. Uh, uh, I'll give you all her contact information for her email so you can poke her about your own questions if you have any in future time. Mm -hmm. well, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>